Hi, Pastor Chris here. Uh, let, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you give us. We thank you for the blessing of the Bible. Uh, we thank you for all of your children, uh, the, the baptized children of God who are connected to you and your Son, Jesus Christ, by the Holy Spirit. Uh, we rejoice that you have called us blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the Bible, where it comes from, uh, and what it's what it's doing and what it's all about. So, um, the, the um, what is the Bible? And if you're following along in the, the Catechism, it's a uh, question number seven. Um, and, and who wrote it? Well, the Holy Spirit wrote it, but He used human beings to do that, using His apostles and prophets. Uh, so you get the individual character of those writers, uh, but it's definitely all God's words by the Holy Spirit. It was written, written over a course of uh, a thousand years um, by a, a bunch of different different uh, authors, and excuse me about that. <laughs> um, they were ha they were given verbal inspiration. The word uh, inspiration, um, like spirit or breath, inspiration, God breathed into those scriptures and gave them the thoughts and the words to say. Um, so the Bible, therefore, is infallible, which means that it is incapable of error. Uh, if there's something that seems like it's wrong, it's not It's not the Bible, it's us and our understanding. Um, and it's also inerrant, which means that it contains no mistakes. Um, so the Bible isn't supposed to be read as a science textbook, and, and, and it's a lot of times we get the genre wrong, um, you know, but, but it does contain no mistakes. Uh, some of the poetic language, for example, it says that we are knit together in our mother's womb. It's not like God's got some Lord mini uh, knitting needles in there, uh, not literally, but it's it's poetic language, it's figurative language, and, and it's okay to use uh, that kind of stuff, obviously. Um, so why can we be confident the Bible is the Word of God? Well, Jesus uses the Old Testament as God's Word, and so if you look, look at the Gospels and uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, Jesus quotes uh, the Old Testament as authoritative. Uh, Jesus himself speaks his words authoritatively. You know, you have heard it said, but I say to you um, is something that he said. So, so Jesus himself speaks with authority. I remember we said that he was the word of God incarnate in the flesh. Uh, and God inspired the writers of the Bible. And so the, the New Testament letters, um, you know, those are all definitely God's word. So we can, we can be sure that it's God's word uh, to the people who uh, originally heard it and God's word to us. Um, there is truth in that. Uh, just want to make a note on human reason. Um, reason, how, how we think about things is a servant for understanding the Bible. Um, theologians call this the ministerial use of reason, reason um, that ministering that, that servant role. And so um, we can use all of our brain power. God gave us our reason and all of our senses to understand what it is that he's saying to us. Uh, and we can understand things really, really well. Uh, but we can't use our brain power, we can't use that reason to determine the truthfulness of the Bible. So uh, if there's something that doesn't seem true, well, it's not the Bible that's wrong, it's something wrong with our reason or our ability to, to understand it. Um, and so uh, we don't need to get worried about that kind of stuff. But uh, some people say, oh, well, it's not reasonable that Jesus would walk on water, therefore it must be a fiction. And that's not the case at all. We, we believe that the Bible... Uh, is what it is. Jesus did what he said he did, uh, and so we, we hold those miracles a high view of Scripture, it's also called. Um, some notes on law and gospel. The, the Bible's divided into two main scriptures, and every passage in somehow, some way, uh, points to either the law, uh, which teaches what we are to do or not to do, or what God's people were to do or not to do, um, and the law shows our sin. It gives us an SO, like, I'm in trouble, throw me in life, you know, life preserver off the boat. Uh, so it shows our sin. Where it's the gospel, um, the gospel means good news, uh, teaches what God has done and still does in Jesus. Uh, the gospel shows our Savior. Uh, so when there's passages that show an expectation what God's people should do, that's law. Uh, when the, the Bible talks about passages that, that what God has done, uh, that's gospel. Uh, the, the rescuing of God's people out of slavery in Egypt is gospel. 
uh, that's the good news of what God has done. And he continues to give us good news as he rescues us from sin, death, and the power of the devil. Um, there's a part of the scripture called the great Shema. And Shema just means here. Uh, so here. And it goes like this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk about them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Um, this is, hey, you know, this is the one thing that, that the, the first commandment, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. Uh, and so it's about our servanthood of God. Um, but then he goes in this lengthy section um, about uh, the word. Uh, and this isn't just an occasional hearing God's word on a Sunday morning or in Sunday school. Uh, this is about a, a talking about God's word, about the Bible, uh, when you wake up and when you go to sleep and when you leave the house and, um, you know, literally put it, you know, on, uh, they'd have these phylacteries that they would wear on their foreheads and, and uh, on, on their wrist. And, and so that's how much God's word uh, should take root in us. Um, so I encourage you to, to take this seriously and, and re remember to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your soul, and all your mind. That, that is your purpose in life, uh, is to love God, and, and as it shows in various things, uh, but also to be focused in the Word, because uh, that's what enables us to genuinely love uh, the Lord our God and love our neighbor as ourself. Uh, the Bible gives us life. Um, and this is Ephesians chapter 4, and this is verse 8 through 9. Uh, finally, brothers, and when I said brothers, it's also sisters. And if I read the uh, the guide I pass out, the catechism challenge, I would have removed some of that gender-specific language that didn't need to be there. But anyway, uh, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence or if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Uh, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Uh, so you look at, at the good things, the beautiful things, the commendable things. Those are things we should be thinking about. Uh, and quite specifically, St. Paul's, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, i.e. the word, what, what he means is that the word, well, well, we, we practice these things uh, and then we get the God of peace with us. So what we think about is important. Uh, you can be sitting in class, you can have like a bad thought pop in your head, and you can say, okay, I got a bad thought in my head. Uh, you just sort of name it and just sort of let it go out the door, and, and you can think about a Bible verse or something good, a piece of art or a beautiful scene, uh, and that's a way of resetting us to, to a godly way of thinking as opposed to a, a self-centered, evil way of thinking. Um, so um, we can ruminate. That's where you think about bad things all day long. Um, you know, we can do that, but God wants us to think about and do the God stuff, because uh, God doesn't want you to be miserable. You know, God wants you to, to focus on him, and he might throw some curveballs along the way, uh, but he wants you to place your trust in him. Uh, therefore, we do it as what God wants us to do. Uh, reading and hearing God's word. Uh, and this is from the back of the catechism, page 354 is where this section starts. If you want to read that, uh, you're more than welcome to. Um, the first thing is just do it. Uh, the Bible's confusing. It's complex. Um, he's like, oh, I don't want to even open the book. I don't want to do it. Uh, um, well, no, it's okay. The more you do something, the easier it is it gets. Uh, first time you rode your bike, um, you know, my guess is that, you know, you fell over several times, you scraped your knee and jiggled the handlebars back and forth. And after a while, by practice, you were able to, to, to get into it. And now you can probably ride a bike without even thinking about it. Um, you, you just do it. You know, you just get it done. Uh, if you're a musician, scales and arpeggios. Uh, if you're an athlete, uh, you need to do the, 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 the things, whatever sport you're in, um, you know, the stretches, the warm-ups, and those kinds of, of, of rudiments, uh, you just need to get done. So, so just, just do it. Um, and there, there's different ways to take in God's Word. Um, and so you can actually, you know, re, re, read the book, 
um, you know, which, which is always good. And I've got a study Bible here with lots of notes, and that way, um, if there's things I don't know, I can look and see what the notes are, and that helps. Um, there are, are graphic novels uh, about the Bible, and let me just uh, uh, transition here. So uh, graphic novels, which is like the Bible in a, a uh, graphic novel, comic book kind of form. It's still uh, God's Word, but it is God's Word. Uh, lately, um, I've been trying to read through the book of Romans, and this is the Bible that I like uh, using now. Uh, and if you look at it, uh, you'll see there's no verse numbers or chapter numbers, and it's written just like a book with nice uh, uh, crisp lines, clean lines. And, and just reading through things, Romans, all in one fell swoop over and over again, uh, there's things that, <coughs> excuse me, by God's grace, I start to pick up one. Um, there's also ways of, of uh, reading the Bible in different translations. Uh, the Old Testament is written in mostly Hebrew, a little bit of Aramaic. Uh, the New Testament is written in Greek. Uh, so people will come out with different, you know, ways of putting those Greek and Hebrew words into language that we can understand. Uh, so there's different, all sorts of different English translations. There's all sorts of different uh, Spanish and, and, you know, whatever kind of language you want, there's a translation. Um, you know, cho choose one that's good for you. There's some, some translations that are designed to be read for kids that are in, you know, third grade reading level. And, and I'd rather have you read that uh, than some things with words you don't understand. I know the translation we use in church that I use is... Uh, the English Standard Version, they've got big words like propitiation. Um, if you want to, you know, use a bot translation that's a little bit easier to read, that is also great. Uh, also, I like to look at Bible videos and uh, just go to YouTube and you'll say, you know, Bible Book of Mark. Uh, and there'll be a site that will pop up and you can hear uh, the words of the Bible as it's acted out by actors. Um... I like listening to the audio, so the, the Bible.is app is what I use for that, um, and, and some other times, uh, some of that kind of stuff. So hearing it read to me is how I do it, and even when I, I read it, I will speak it out loud. Uh, which brings to the next one, there's different ways of reading it. And so I'll read the Bible very differently in church than I will uh, as I'm preparing for like a sermon study, uh, and that'll be different than like my private meditation time. So I like to read the book of Romans, but sometimes I just like to just to become still. I like to breathe and, you know, a pop, thought pops in. I say a little prayer called the Jesus Prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. As I breathe in and I breathe out, as ideas come, they, they pop there. I'm like, oh, that's nice. There's an idea. and just sort of let it go on its way. Uh, and then I will read the Psalms uh, very slowly, just sort of, um, blessed is the one who never walks within the place where wicked scoffers talk. And that's a him version of, of Psalm 1, verse 1. Uh, but I'm like, okay, well, what's it mean to be blessed? What's it mean that I am blessed by God? Uh, who are those who, who, who don't walk in the way of the wicked? You know, what, what does the way of the wicked look, look like? What, what, are, what are scoffers? And, and ask these questions. And I uh, also have a, a Bible that I journal some of these things. I've not started the app, but I, I have that. And so there's different ways of reading the Bible and, uh, you know, for different, different things. So... Um, the whole point is just do it. You know, whatever works for you, just do it. Um, you know, you go on on a BibleGateway.com. If there's a word you want to know about, you know, like fighting in the Bible, you pop it up, fighting, and it comes out all the verses that talk about fighting. And so you can can look at that there. So, um, oops. Ooh. Oh, God, I'm glad you didn't see I actually popped up a thing on my screen that you didn't see, which I'm glad. Okay. Uh, the Bible is about forgiveness in life in Jesus. Uh, John chapter 20, verse 31. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that by believing you may have life in his name. Uh, so just remember, uh, reading the Bible, that, that somehow, some way, it all points to Jesus. There might not be direct connections, uh, might be obscure, but, but if you're reading the book to, to cherry-pick what you want to believe out of it, that's the wrong reading uh, way to read the Bible. If you read the Bible like, okay, uh, Jesus loves me, Jesus came for me, uh, that is the right way uh, to read the Bible. It is not a guidebook for right living, so it's not like, oh my goodness, I need to do this to get right by God. I need to not steal. I need to not cheat. I need to not curse. I need to, and, and all those things are true. 
Um, but really, that's the law. In the law, what we should do shows our sin, which points us to Jesus, which is the gospel, which, which shows, shows our Savior. Uh, so it's not primarily a guidebook about how to live right. It's definitely not a modern science book. We, you know, we, we used to, we, we want to read all sorts of details into the written page, and we think it's accurate, um, and, and it's not that, you know. Um, it's also not a modern history textbook. Uh, so we, we don't, a lot of times we think when we read something, it, it will fit into like the genres that we're used to, the, the kinds of books we're used to, it, and that's the wrong way uh, to read it. Um, and so ancient writers will record histories differently uh, than, than we would today. Uh, and I dare say if you looked at a, a history uh, video from 1950s, it will look much different than a history of videos produced uh, in 2020. Um, one of the principles is that scripture interprets scripture. So uh, the grammar of the words is important, uh, meaning you know what part of speech it is. In, in the Greek, there's 136 different parts of speech. Uh, in the Hebrew, it's a little bit different, but but just just what the word is, whether it's a noun or a verb or a pronoun or indirect object, all those things that you learned about, you know, in, in grammar, is there. Also, what the definitions are, because we can hear something in English, um, but one word can mean a different thing to me than it can mean to you. So it's like clarifying, well, well, how does this author define this word? Um, and, and what's what's the background of that? Uh, the context is very important. And so if you want to figure out how like a phrase is used, beloved, let us love one another. He who loveth not, no, not God, but for God is love. What we, we look at the rest of, of, of the epistles of John to figure out what what that means, you know, and how how St. John uses the word love, uh, which will be a little bit different, slightly different than like how, um, you know, one of the other, St. Paul, you know, uh, the, fruit, uh, uh, the greatest of these is love, 1 Corinthians 13. Um, and they're similar, they overlap, uh, but there's just slight differences there. Uh, so we want to get the context Immediate conduct of the passage and, and how it's used. We talked about this before about the genre. Uh, poetry is more picturesque language. Prose is sort of, you know, the straight what we're used to reading. Uh, a lot of letters, um, speeches, and others. So you would read a letter differently than you would read a written speech. You know, you would read poetry different than you would, would read a letter. Your brain just automatically goes to these things. And, um, you know, God gave us all these ways uh, to, to give us his word, his meaning. Um, and, and sometimes, like poetry, you sort of reading, you sort of scratch your head, and it's like, what is the poet getting at? Well, as God gives that, he wants us to think. He wants us to try to, in prayer, turn to him and, and gather the meaning. Uh, and there's some things that we might get, there's some things we might not get. It's okay, because he, he delights to come to us in his word. Um, and words do things. Yes, well, what's the original audience of this? Like the book of Revelation is extremely um, misinterpreted within the church. That's the last book that talks about, you know, the, the four horsemen of the apocalypse and that kind of thing. Well, it's originally written to give comfort in code language to people who are being persecuted. Uh, and so that was the original well, there. So, so the, the author's trying to give, give, uh, give comfort there. Uh, when the Bible was written 2,000 years ago, yes, you were in mind as the... the, the uh, the words were written down, but really there's a specific group of people uh, that was written to. So the different churches, you know, the uh, church in Ephesus was different than the church in Galatia, which was different than the uh, the, the church in Rome, and, and all these things have, you know, just a little bit different thing. Just like I would write a different letter to uh, the church I served in Norfolk than the church I served in Massachusetts than the church I'm serving now. Um, and so it's a, a, a different, uh, different kind of, of thing there. Also, is it law or gospel? Um, there's some things where it will provide a description of what the people did, uh, and people say, oh, that's what we must do, um, when, when it's not that. Uh, instead, it's just a description of what they did, but there is you know, some, some meaning there, uh, and, and, uh, but there's always that gospel thing there. Um, most importantly is that the Holy Spirit helps us. It's not as though you can somehow figure it out on your own. Uh, I always say a prayer, dear Lord God, please uh, open up your word to me. Um, 
in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, speak to me. Sometimes I'll do a little bit more formulaic prayer. Uh, grant that we may so mark, read, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, uh, the collect of the word, uh, sometimes there, but, but it's always a prayer that the Holy Spirit guides. Uh, the Bible's read in community. So if you're reading something and you come up with an idea that no one else has ever had, uh, or people have had you just don't know about because a bad idea, uh, well, that should tell you something, you know. So if you say, oh, I'm reading this Bible. I have this discovery that just about me that no one else knows, uh, you know, I, I, I'd talk to others in the community and say, hey, is this what the Bible is actually saying? And I, I know there are times when I've read the Bible in phrases in my life that were just inappropriate. So, And it's not just, what does this mean to me? And so... Um, the Bible was given to the people when it was written, uh, is given to the people, um, you know, throughout the ages. Uh, so it's not just God coming directly through the word just to you, uh, but it's given to the entire community. Um, and so our translations, our, our understanding of it uh, isn't just like a, a, a lone wolf kind of deal. Um, and there's a lot of help, you know. You can talk to your parents and they might be able to help you, they might not. Uh, you can talk to your to either me or Pastor Becker, and we might be able to help, we might not. Um, there's trusted sources on the internet uh, that you can turn to. Uh, don't just Google Bible things because what you'll read on Wikipedia is just wrong. Um, you know, there's a lot of false teachings, uh, but there are some good teachings out there, and I'd be happy to, to point you in the direction of some good uh, teaching on the internet. Um, you know, things from Concordia Publishing House and things that our church body puts out are generally really, really good, lcms.org, uh, cph.org, or those websites, uh, and, and you can rely on those. If there's YouTube stuff by a Missouri Senate pastor, usually it's really good, maybe a little bit boring sometimes, uh, but it's usually pretty good, um, and so I can get you set up there. So um, the, the, the Bible shapes us, it transforms us, uh, it, it molds us, uh, enables us to be, so my, my encouragement to you uh, is just to be in the Word, be in the book. Just, just let it breathe into you. Uh, let God's God's breath come to you as you as you hear the Word, uh, as you meditate on the Word, and as that Word changes your life. Um, it's a gift. It really is a gift, and I I pray that your 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 time in God's Word would would lead you, uh, knowing His love and His peace. In Jesus' name, Amen.